Leon Kennedy is the rookie cop turned special forces powerhouse agent from the Resident Evil series. I'm sure that of all Resident Evil characters, he's the one I need to introduce the least. Being the lead of two of the series' greatest titles, and competing with the likes of Chris Redfield as the main character of the entire series. But could this badass quipping agent survive the 1979 film Alien? That's what today's video is all about. Let me explain. While gearing up for the David Baron and Postra hosted charity event Sleigh Bells, I was playing a lot more Dead by Daylight than usual, trying to train up as the Xenomorph to bring a win to my team. And while doing this training with Unique Geese and Standby Banana, I was up against a bot who was Leon Kennedy. Now, in order to prepare for the tournament, I had given this bot some pretty mean perks that made him difficult to outmaneuver, especially given how in Dead by Daylight, bots can actually see the killer through walls, whereas human players cannot. And that got me thinking about how Leon Kennedy would actually fare against the Xenomorph in his own series. Tell someone who gives a shit. And the more I thought on it, the less certain I was that it would work. So in order to make it interesting, I decided to run a little thought experiment and dropped Leon into the 1979 film Alien to see what would happen. For the purposes of this video, we'll have Leon replace Ripley, and we'll just assume that character-wise he is the exact same as he was in the Resident Evil titles. We're going to give him all the training he had acquired by the time of RE4 as well to give him the best possible shot at survival. So let's look at Leon and see what that gives us. Leon first appeared in the Resident Evil series in Resident Evil 2 where he was a rookie cop assigned to the Raccoon City Police Department. The majority of the game actually takes place at the RPD, which has been taken over by the undead. On Leon's first day on the job, he stumbles into a citywide apocalyptic event, where zombie bites can be fatal and a giant burly man in a trench coat is stalking him. By the end, Leon barely escapes with his life, having killed Mr. X and fleeing Raccoon City. The next time we see him is in Resident Evil 4, where after the events of Raccoon City, Leon has undergone extensive training in many forms of combat, but especially melee combat which he lacked in Resident Evil 2. His new mission in this game is to rescue the president's daughter from a Spanish cult that uses an insectoid parasite to hijack its host's brain. You know, normal government stuff. I think RE4 is going to be the more valuable game between the two, in order to judge how effective Leon would be against a xenomorph-like threat. Since these enemies are not only more dangerous than the enemies he encountered in Raccoon City, some of them also behave like a xenomorph in the case of the Verdugo and in some cases Regenerators. I could also use Resident Evil 6 Leon, but do you really want me to do that? 4 is our ideal Leon because this is probably the version of Leon everyone knows anyway. It's his best game and it's also just good, unlike Resident Evil 6. Plus, if I have to account for RE6, I'd have to account for every Leon appearance, and like, do you really give a shit about Leon in Infinite Darkness? Well, maybe you should because there was like one good scene in that show, and it's the one where Leon fucking caps a zombie without even looking at it. That's just something he is capable of doing. So you might be asking yourself, what chance does a xenomorph stand? I've seen them get blown to bits in movies like Aliens. Well, in order to really put in perspective how strong an alien on its own is, we need to talk about their biology. This is something I'm really happy Alien Romulus shed more light on. For starters, Xenomorphs as a whole are relatively bulletproof. In Alien Isolation, one shot against a Xenomorph will merely glance off of it and not cause any harm to it. Considering Leon's weapon of choice is usually some small firearm like a pistol, this already put things heavily in the Xenomorph's favor. But if Xenomorphs are bulletproof, how do I explain the events of Aliens? Well, the same way the characters in that movie do. Sure, Aliens get blasted to bits and boatloads in that movie, but as is explained, their weapons, called pulse rifles, fire explosive ammunitions that would theoretically be able to puncture an alien's body. The real outlier is AVP Requiem. This movie puts the Xenomorphs on modern day Earth, where they go against more traditional heavy weaponry and do not fare very well. I could easily write this off since the AVP series is not within the main continuity of the Alien series, but I won't because I want this matchup to be more even. So what weapons work against Xenomorphs in this film? Well, we don't really see much in the way of small arms used against them, but we do see heavy military rifles and of course Predator technology. And considering these are military weapons, they're likely using military munitions, which are also known as explosive munitions. So that definitely implies, at least to me, that in order for a gun to be effective against the Xenomorph, you want at least a military grade weapon like an assault rifle, and military rounds or otherwise explosive ammunition. Does Leon have access to this? Well, in his home series, he absolutely would, but in 1979's Alien, that'll definitely be more of a struggle. So how does Leon handle a bulletproof enemy? Well, in RE4, as well as other RE games, this is usually solved with explosives, 
which Leon is capable of crafting or finding typically. Considering we don't know much about the actual contents of the cupboards of the Nostromo, or most of the chemicals or other elements, it's unknown if Leon could create an explosive like that. And less clear if he would even want to, considering that the ship's structure is the only thing preventing both him and the alien from being sucked into the vacuum of space. Plus, it's made pretty clear in the film that the only available weapon for these otherwise doomed transport clerks are incinerator units, meaning that aside from those, Leon would have to solely rely on his ability to survive or his hand-to-hand -hand capabilities. But herein lies another issue. We can't treat the xenomorph like a zombie that Leon can roundhouse kick into next week because an alien is going to be much more akin to, say, a Verdugo. Yes, Leon can roundhouse kick those too, but only when the Verdugo is immobilized. Foreshadowing. But even if Leon did have the weaponry necessary to defeat a xenomorph readily available, I can near guarantee he wouldn't want to use it for a few reasons. First off, if he does have explosive munitions in, say, an assault rifle, two things are bound to happen. One, he hits the alien and causes a massive amount of acidic blood to spray throughout the ship, which could potentially cause a hole breach and kill everyone, Leon included. Two, he misses the xenomorph and explosives hit the ship itself, which could also breach the hull. And even if the hull were to survive either of those, we also have to consider that the ship is wired to self-destruct. I imagine it would be possible for Leon to accidentally kick this off with an explosive round, as something similar happens in Aliens. So all in all, for Leon to survive, we're going to have to take away his favorite kind of toys. His real saving grace here is that he's capable of using a flamethrower in his home series, something that is a known xenomorph deterrent. So could Leon viably kill a xenomorph? Strong, maybe. But that's not what this video is about. In order to find out if Leon could survive the events of Alien, we need to get into each character's headspace, figure out how Leon reacts to different events of the film, and how the Xenomorph would approach Leon. Let's begin with Leon. If I had to describe Leon, it would be in two parts, one being his professional side and the other being his more personal self. Between Resident Evil 2 and 4, we see the balance between these two sides change. In RE4, Leon is almost strictly business not letting anything stand between him and his goal. He doesn't allow personal wants or vendettas to cloud his focus, which I'd credit to his more disciplined service training. The few times we see that more professional, goal-oriented mask slip are during moments where he has to acknowledge the Fubar situation around him. These are usually moments with Luis or when he gets emotional against Krauser. Ada, it's kind of hard to tell because Leon by default is like always in impress Ada mode, but I'd argue she's also a character who can see past his stony exterior. In a crisis situation, Leon is incredibly cautious, and this can be read in almost every movement he makes. By default, when walking with a pistol, he holds it up in the air at the ready, or down towards the ground. When stealth killing an enemy, he often makes sure to cover their mouth before he slides the knife in. He diffuses tripwires, takes note of his surroundings, there's never a moment where he blindly runs into trouble. And because of this, it's very hard to catch Leon unaware. Even another agent such as Ada can't really sneak up on Leon without him expecting her. This is the exact personality type that is going to be crucial in a survival situation such as Las Plagas, or alternatively, aboard the Nostromo. Truth be told, if I were playing this as close to how I think Leon would react in the story of Alien, I'm not sure how much of the story would have taken place anyway. I think Leon would have gone out with Dallas, Kane, and Lambert, and stop Kane from getting face-hugged with a roundhouse kick or some shit. But with that being said, let's look at the alien itself. The xenomorph as seen in Alien is a specific cast type known as a drone. These are essentially the worker xenos who make the hives that queens lay eggs in. The more combat-oriented aliens, warrior xenomorphs, are the ones most commonly seen in Aliens, the sequel. The Nostromo drone actually has quite a personality to it if you pay close attention. Let me recount every time the xenomorph is actually encountered by crewmates, and I'll point out its strengths weaknesses, and why I think stealth is Leon's best friend here. So the Nostromo drone, after bursting from Kane's chest, is next encountered near one of the Nostromo's coolant towers, where it then attacks and kills Brett. Based on what we know from Romulus, since Brett found its shed skin here, it's likely that it had just matured when it killed Brett, basically waking up to breakfast in bed. From here on, we're told that the Xenomorph is using the ship's ventilation to move around undetected, and it becomes clear that it likes the dark. The next time we see the Xenomorph is in these vents. Dallas enters the tunnels with an incinerator unit, hoping to scare the alien into a specific direction while also closing alternative pathways. This forces the drone in close contact with Dallas and gets him killed. My interpretation of the scene, however, is not that the xenomorph was hunting Dallas the whole time, but that it wanted to get away from that fire. It attacks Dallas as a last-ditch attempt at survival. The next time we see the full-bodied xenomorph is when Ripley, Parker, and Lambert are making their getaway plan. While Ripley goes to collect her cat Jones, Parker and Lambert load heavy metal canisters to bring with them. The loud clanking attracts the attention of the Xenomorph, 
who then kills Parker and Lambert. The final time the alien is seen aboard the Nostromo is wandering the halls after Ripley sets the self-destruct sequence. She narrowly avoids the alien by hiding around a corner, and although it notices Jones, it stows away aboard the lifeboat for a nap. Do you see where I'm bringing this? The alien in this film, while hostile, is also pretty skittish. Most of the time it kills someone, it's because they've wandered into its territory when it wasn't expecting company, we'll say. And it also doesn't notice a loud, obvious Ripley in the same hall as it. In fact, it barely notices Ripley aboard the lifeboat at all. In fact, the only time in this film we can say for certain the Xenomorph went out of its way to find and kill someone was when Parker and Lambert were making a racket the whole ship could hear. This alien is territorial, but it's not necessarily great at tracking its prey. And although it relies on stealth, it can also very plainly be outstealthed, and sometimes will just rush a target head on if it feels confident. Understanding this is going to be crucial for Leon's survival, and I think actually gives him the upper hand. While Leon can't shoot or stab the Xenomorph, being armed with an incinerator and a roundhouse kick might just do the job. And while Xenomorphs are known to use their tails as attacking whips, Leon is able to dodge or even parry similar tentacle or tail-based attacks in his own series. The best chance Leon would have to defeat the alien would be to catch it with its back turned to him and rock its world with a flamethrower. Between the two, this stealthy strategizing opportunist would probably win the day, under the right circumstances. Because if the alien chooses to rush Leon head on, as it very well may, there isn't much Leon can do other than run or dodge. No knife parry would work when the acid melts the blade away and risk the ship's integrity. It honestly feels like a deadlock to me because while the Xenomorph is definitely the type of enemy Leon could theoretically take down if they were on Earth or some alien planet, the restrictions provided by the film make it almost impossible. We haven't even begun to discuss what would happen to a Xenomorph who is burnt to death, as this isn't something that happens super often. Usually they're just scared by fire. But if Leon did make a Xenomorph nice and crispy, we have to assume that acid blood might once again be a huge problem. So to reiterate the question, could Leon survive the events of Alien from 1979? Let me answer that question by explaining how I think it would go down, keeping in mind that Leon is replacing Ripley here. The Nostromo lands on LV-426, where Leon, Dallas, Kane, and Lambert go to check out the derelict ship. While Leon takes the lead and proceeds with caution, the others do still take the time to check out the space jockey. Kane descends down into the egg pit and gets face hugged. Since Leon is with Dallas, Ash has authority on the ship and lets them back inside to try and get Kane some help. From here on, the story is much the same. I can totally see Leon having a similar distrust for Ash that Ripley had, having seen his own fair share of scientists intrigued by weird monsters they're better off shooting in the face. Once things get to the dinner party scene though, that's when I can imagine things take a turn. In the original Alien, Parker tries to kill the chestburster, only to be stopped by Ash. I don't think Leon would allow this. I actually think he'd grab that sucker first chance he gets. But let's say he doesn't and the Xenomorph is allowed to fully mature. Brett is killed, starting off our survival situation. I can see a number of changes happening from here on out. For instance, Leon would probably actually go after the Xenomorph in the vents with Dallas, and might even see him get killed. And he'd probably be on an active hunt for the bug while the rest of the crew does their crew shit. With Dallas dead and Leon taking control, he'd kick Ash's ass swiftly and securely. The goal now is to get Parker, Lambert, and himself to safety. But since Leon doesn't have a Cat Jones running around, we can guess that while Parker and Lambert prep the ship, he's going on the offensive. But since neither the alien nor Leon are necessarily excellent at tracking their prey, we can surmise neither find the other by the time that Parker and Lamper are dead. Leon then decides to set the ship's self-destruct and arms himself. He finally encounters the Xenomorph face to face with his incinerator unit and torches it up before he makes his getaway to the lifeboat. Once aboard, he launches the lifeboat and probably says some sort of quippy one-liner as he watches the Nostromo explode. Like, good riddance or something like that. And while he prepares for cryosleep, the alien once again emerges from the walls of the lifeboat. Leon can't prep an incinerator unit in time and decides to blast it out of the airlock. He gets his pressure suit on and preps a hook gun before blasting the alien out after luring it into a good position. While the alien clings on for dear life, Leon fires the hook gun into a surface of the ship and delivers a famous Leon Kennedy roundhouse kick to its fucking face, now with added hook gun element, knocking it out of the ship. Leon shuts the door on it and ends the movie. Resident Alien. Wait, that's that's already a show? Fuck. I mean Alien Evil. Sure. In the end, I decide that the main thing separating the survivor Ripley from the survivor Leon is simply a matter of training and experience. Leon has several years of Resident Eviling under his belt, so I think he'd be prepared for this encounter. His downsides come from his more proactive nature, driving him towards danger rather than away from it. 
At any point in the story, Leon could absolutely be killed by pushing forward into an unknown's lion den instead of pulling back. And yes, I had to include at least one roundhouse kick. But that's basically it. Could Leon beat the alien? Absolutely. Stick him in aliens and he could have his run of the place, blasting them apart like Ganados or Regenerators. But could he survive alien? Well, in my opinion, Yes, but I did sort of have to fudge things in his favor a little to make it have a satisfying conclusion. Alien and Resident Evil are both two of my favorite series ever, so it was a lot of fun to try and pick apart how these series could mingle if that were ever the case. And if you enjoyed this little thought experiment, be sure to comment down below what you want to see next. I think other fun ones could be something like, could Ash Williams survive Doom? Could Laurie Strode survive Friday the 13th? Or could James Sunderland survive Resident Evil? If you can think of other fun crossovers, let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I can't promise how frequent this would be as a series considering I need to gather feedback on this first one. But if this video does well, I totally want to keep it going. That's all out of me. I'm Demuted. Peace.